Hey guys, it's Emmanuel from Las Vegas. Uh, so, so excited to speak with you again. I've been kind of uh, in, the, in the bushes a little bit just because I went to a conference recently with Dr. Bradley Nelson and everyone and uh, learned a lot. I had, uh, in fact, if you were there, um, we actually evacuated uh, in the building because I had 10 or I think it was like seven or 10 secretaries of mine just massively taking notes. And so all these, you know, this fire started sh showing up and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden the smoke alarms went off. So if you, I'm sorry if you guys had to leave. I know some of you guys were there when that happened. Um, just taking a ton of notes, just learning a lot. There's so much to learn and um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to participate in that. And so, but I wanted to do something. Uh, we, we actually, if you, some of you guys actually participated in some type of interview. And I remember the interview lady was asking me some questions, you know, and I wanted to say something. I said, you know, can I, can I say something? And she said, sure. She's like, I want to talk about like success with the emotion code and having like having abundance with the emotion code. We need more stories of people, uh, you know, making a six figure income or above, uh, doing the emotion code being full time, you know, so that's something that, that, uh, I wanted to personally speak about because I have experience about it, um, just within the last uh, year and a half. But what's interesting is that, so she said, yeah, go ahead and say whatever you want to say. So I did that. But here, and then it kind of brought me to another level like of, of thinking of after I did that interview is that we take ourselves too darn seriously, you know, and uh, I really think that we need to laugh more because think about it. We do work with a lot of people that are dealing with what um, illnesses or dis-ease or sadness or depression. You know, we deal with that every single day. I mean, I meet with about 10 to 12 people daily about those things. It can kind of get to you a little bit. Well, of course, obviously you have a shield. And you have to make sure that your shield is the strongest it is. Like, you know, make sure it's not, you know, you're not 80% covered. Make sure you're you're 100%. But at the end of the day, I think the best way to do it is to laugh it off, is to make fun of it. Make Not make fun of the your career, but just have fun with it. Um, I met with close to maybe 1,300 people within a year. And trust me, there's been some funny, funny moments. And so I want to spend this time, video, hopefully to make you laugh. Maybe this morning on Tuesday at 624 AM, I make you laugh and you think this is hilarious because um, only emotion code or body code practitioners would understand why this is funny. Otherwise, if you're a regular civilian, you have no idea what I'm talking about and you may need to watch other videos like what is the emotion code in 15 minutes uh, and what is the heart wall in 15 minutes. You need to be informed first, maybe, you know, uh, and, but I think if you're a practitioner, this video is for you because we need to laugh more. We need to have more fun, right? So I did this video last uh, a couple minutes ago, but I have to do a retake. Why? Because I have a beautiful daughter who wanted headphones for going to school and she said that she lost her headphones or something, but that's life, you know? And so we're going we're gonna to do this video again. I'm excited for this version. Uh, so let's talk about it. 11 things that only a practitioner would understand or the life of a practitioner and what you guys would totally understand or maybe mesh with. And if not, then you haven't been a practitioner long enough. So uh, number one is the, the emotion code uh, the emotion code emotion, you know, we have these 60 emotions here, the, the, the emotion that kind of rubs the client in a funny way. So that's number one. It's kind of like, I found a, a peeved once with this lady. So I was, I was like, it seems here it's, this is, I found peeved here. And then, you know, she said peeved. <sighs> well, you may, I obviously, uh, don't get peeved. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's something, uh, or issue with your muscle testing, or I don't know what's going on, or maybe it's, you know, maybe you should retest again, but no, I really don't get peeved at all. I mean, it's just, it's not something I really do. I have a lot of peace in my life. And I mean, okay. So basically in my mind, I was saying, don't look now, but you're getting peeved. Okay. So, um, which means easily annoyed. Um, and so it was just kind of a funny situation. And so, or, or sometimes you might even have a very sensitive person be like, you know, I found stubbornness here. You know, she's like stubbornness, you know, and then I'm like, okay. So when I hear that tone, I'm like, but it, it it should be absorbed. Uh, let me check here. No. Yeah. So anyway, it's just, I think it's kind of funny how like whenever you say keywords, it somehow triggers the person. And uh, <laughs> we, we have to be kind uh, as we provide the service. And as you know, if you're looking into the emotion code, you don't have to talk about uh, anything uh, that you've dealt with in your life. So privacy is completely uh, accepted. But it's just funny. If you're a practitioner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was like, so I always mention that peeve story. So peeve, I do not get peeve. And I was like, don't look now, girl. Don't look now. Uh, that's number one. Number two, the teenage truth bomb. Okay. So uh, what is this teenage? So there was this young girl, probably about 12 years old. And she said, 
uh, oh, and she was looking kind of at, at me, and it was just very quiet, and I was just looking back at her, and, I, and like the mom says, okay, um, my, my daughter's going to work with you real quick. And so she puts her daughter there, and I'm just kind of staring at her. She's staring at me, and I said, you don't know anything about what I do, do you? She's like, no, I, I know a little bit. I'm like, but you haven't seen any videos, have you? She's like, no. Um, so uh, so what do you think I do? And she said, she says, well, mom says that you um, help people with like anxiety and like depression and like uh, when you and you do that by putting a magnet, um, a magnet on your head, uh, a magnet on your head. So honestly, I wanted to just erupt in laughter just because, just the way she said it, I almost wanted to just drop the towel, like 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 burn the towel and throw away the towel, and, you know, just because it was so funny. I'm like the way you said it just makes it sound really weird, like just you know. But the reality is, is you know, you can, make, you can make it sound all professional, like, you know, we use applied kinesiology, we do muscle testing, and then we put a magnet over your head, you know, but it was just kind of interesting that she, the way she said it. So then this continues to my third point, which is the number, number three, which is called the graveyard flowers, okay? Now, the graveyard flowers is a figment of my first world mental thinking, okay? So it's just kind of like, you know, I just like would, would think, maybe I'd be in the shower and I'd be like, <laughs> that'd be funny if in a graveyard situation, you know, and so this just came to my random mind, which was just like the idea of people in a graveyard and they're all, you know, and, I'm, and um, it kind of continues with this, with this teenage girl. She obviously is a lot older now. She's like 40 or 50. Uh, maybe, maybe yours truly has been, you know, gone to their sides. So there's my tombstone. People are dropping all these flowers. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe clients remember me and said, oh, you know, he was a pretty cool guy. He, he was all right. You know, they, they put all these flowers there. And then, um, and then all of a sudden that girl shows up, that same girl who was just kind of like said that one phrase about the whole, you put a magnet over your head. And then, so then, you know, there's all these flowers there, like just dozens of flowers. And all of a sudden she's like, you know, did anyone find it weird that he just put a magnet on his head? Did anyone find that kind of, kind of strange and all? And then everyone's like, yeah, yeah. That, I thought that was weird too. It's like, you too? It's like, yeah, you too. And so this whole commotion starts and little by little, the flowers start leaving, like they start taking their flowers back. And then there's only like, you know, one left dead flower on the, on the tombstone. That, that's. That was just in my mind. I don't know why I thought of that, but I just thought it'd be kind of just, just my weird, strange mind, okay? The second strange, weird mind thought that came out of this was the uh, the lady who becomes highly successful, you know, starts doing very, very well and, you know, has over 35,000 people listening to her speak. And just to make it more dramatic, I have somehow a beard with like a cane and I'm there and, and like, you know, I, I want to watch uh, like a like a pro like a prodigy that you know I, I work with you know and I'm just there with my cane and all of a sudden you know um, I start whispering to people it's like you know I used to work with her it's like I used to work with her you know it's very this old old uh, I have to have an old voice right but I, I'm probably young but I just just to make it dramatic guys just work with me here I'm just like you know I used to work with her and they're just like like uh, you're like shh don't, don't you know don't don't talk while she's talking and then she catches me and she tells the security guards to take me away and and then and then on top of that right before the door closes she says. I never knew you. Okay, guys, so this is, again, first world, weird, strange ponderings of the emotion code practitioner. This is something I thought about. Um, okay, so number four, processing at home. Please, if you're a husband or a wife or you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner, please do not say to your partner that something about processing because if she's having a bad day, don't do it, don't do it. Uh, for example, if I'm eating food, and my wife's having a bad day. You know, you don't want to just say, um, hey, honey, I, I didn't work on you recently. So I don't know why you're, it seems like you're processing. Okay, don't, she knows what processing means. Don't say that because it just adds fuel to the thing. That, that's almost as really mean when a man says to a woman that, um, you know, is it that time of the month again? Like just, you just don't do that. But I think one time I did it. And now I look back, I regretted it. Then I like I had a bunch of trapped emotions that came from it, and I erased them all. So number four is um, don't do that. Don't don't throw processing in there. Like you know, don't don't, don't use it as uh, the potential reasoning of why someone. And my whole family knows, so it's just don't don't use the word processing. Number five, praying before anything. So maybe uh, you know uh, you know I've worked with ten to eleven people a day. I tend to pray before. I've, I think I, every single person I've ever worked with, I've always prayed. I don't think I've ever missed it once where I haven't prayed. That's all good, you know, cheers to Emmanuel. But um, sometimes, you know, before I go to a movie theater, I'm like in the car and I'm like praying before I go to the movie theater. I'm like, what am I doing? Or, you know, I'll be like, I'll 
I'll just be hanging out with my friends and like, hey, we should go play some video games, you know? And then like right before the video games, I start closing my eyes and I'm like, wait a minute, why am I praying before we play PlayStation 4? So again, not that that happens frequently because I don't have time to play video games, but it's just kind of funny how like you get in the habit of praying. And so then now you, it's kind of like you become a prayerful person. Okay, so so beware of the prayerful practitioner. Um, anyway, so that's, I thought you guys might get that. Uh, now, I'll, then number six is uh, what I call the, uh, Superman hearing. So um, all of a sudden we can't enjoy our haircuts anymore. You know, we can't, we can't, well, we can, but it, it goes to an extent. And, and like, um, uh, or if you want to get your pedicure done, or if you're getting a service done by an insurance agent, whatever, you, you'll just hear things. You're like, all of a sudden, as soon as you get your certified practitioner thing, all of a sudden you get endowed with these Superman hearings and you'll hear someone say, you know, it's like, man, I, I, I got to get off of work today because my lower back pain is just killing me, you know? And then you just hear this like, Star Wars theme come in or Superman theme and you want to take off your shirt and inside there's like an E in there and you just want to say, you know, I have something that can help you out. Okay. Just, you know, and then depending on who you're talking to, you have to say it in a really cool way. Um, but it's just, for some reason, it's like, there goes your, your experience of the barber. It's like you're all, all of a sudden you're just hearing things all the time or you're getting your, your toes done. Someone's like, you know, someone just passed away recently. I've been having a really hard time. And then there it goes again, that Superman theme starts rising. Okay. So and hopefully I'm not the only one that does that, but it's kind of like now we have super hearing and we're like, we want to help out everybody we can in the world. If you haven't done that, then it, it, just give it some time where you start seeing a lot of amazing results with the emotion code and body code. And then you're just kind of like obsessed with helping people. It, it, it's bound to happen. So Superman hearing will come. It will be endowed. And it's just funny because even if you're going down the slide of a water park and you hear someone saying like, oh, I hurt my ankle. It's like you want to like speed up with your inner tube. Okay, maybe not that much. Um, so uh, the next one is the... Um, the wind outside, number seven, it's this, the wind outside. So what is the wind outside? So I was just working with someone real quick and the wind was very, very strong. It's, and this is the first time I work with her. And she says, and her eyes were huge, like big old quarters. And I said, what's wrong? Like, are you okay? And she said, oh my gosh, I didn't know I'd be able to hear your spirits uh, that you're contacting. Um, you know, so obviously guys, you know, you're a practitioner. We know we don't contact spirits, but it was just funny how she thought I was going to. And so the winds were super strong, like howling. And she was just like, um, oh my gosh, I didn't know I'd be able to hear your spirit. And so I wanted to kind of continue with it and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could hear them too. But I didn't do that, guys, because I didn't want to freak her out. But I just said, no, no, that's just that's just wind. I don't I don't contact anybody. We're just energetically connecting, you know. So anyway, I thought that was hilarious. And so maybe you've had some circumstance like that. Um, number eight, the tennis match head. Um, I think a lot of us become defender emotion code practitioners. Here's something that I learned in, in, uh, in relationship marketing is that whenever someone says something that's very, very dumb and ignorant, which will happen, uh, what you want to do is you don't want to get to their level. What you want to do is you want to just play the tennis match. So it's like a, you know, you're just kind of like hitting, hitting the ball back. Don't lose, don't lose, don't become defender, emotion code defender. Don't do that because it's just, it makes you look really bad. So what you want to do is just, what I do is, um, you know, if someone says something really dumb, I'll, I'll just, I'll just say what they just said. And I'll kind of tilt my head and just ask a question. So that's one way to do it. Um, or for some reason, someone says like, you know, I heard this is, you know, uh, you know, quackery. You know, it's like quackery. It's like, I heard you, you know, uh, you know, are using, you know, some type of authority from God. It's like authority from God. Like, you know, you just, you just want to just kind of, it's just a very dumb comment. So you just have to, if you, if, if you say a lot, you leave lost. If you say very little and then you kind of question it and then you tilt your head they feel now they have to tap dance in front of you and basically start like, well, you know, like what I meant was blah, 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 blah. And, then, and then just pick one little word from that one sentence and be like, huh? And just keep going. And they just, they just keep, da it's really funny. You just, you basically are just making them dance. Like you're just kind of shooting a gun at their feet, you know, that, that, so do that. It's kind of fun. Um, and number two is, um, you know, uh, you know, the, this, uh, Jim Rohn character who is uh, amazing in Herbalife, he would say, um, you know, answer a like if there's a dumb question, answer with a dumb answer. And so he would say like, you know, I heard something in herbal life where like, you know, you could get, you know, talk some toxic, uh, results and then you could die, you know, like I heard you could die, you know? And he would say, yeah, you know, I've only had about three out of 125 cases of that. Then we just, you know, we, we pay for the funeral and everything like that. And then, you know, and then don't worry about it. We, we restock it with some new formula, blah, blah, blah. 
And so what is he doing? He's, he's messing with him, you know? And so again, when you do that, it kind of makes the, the, the smoke clear that it's like, look, you're asking a very dumb question and I'm, I'm going to call you out. So, so I think some, some of us, I think just to add a little tip in there out of all these little funny things is, you know, just play the tennis match. Just, you know, just, um, if someone says something really dumb, answer with something dumb. If someone says something really stupid, then just go ahead and just ask, uh, just go ahead and mention the same, like a word in the, in the sentence and just kind of like have the, the, the crooked look face, called the crooked look face. Number nine, the chameleon. Uh, some of you guys uh, know what I'm talking about. The chameleon is, you know, if you're talking to like this energy healer, you're like, well, what I do is I use applied kinesiology and then I use magnets and I put it over my governing meridian and I help people to release, you know, emotional baggage, you know, chronic pain and certain just imbalances in the body. But, you know, with a, with a, with just a random guy that's like your friend or whatever, you'd be like, uh, I help people uh, uh, have peace with their past and I help people to not have that shoulder pain anymore. Got it? So you see, you see, the, you see the difference here? You have to adapt to who you're talking to because to that, that person, if you start mentioning even the word applied kinesiology, they would be like, you're not my friend anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. And that's just weird. So so you might want to, like I said, just get to people's levels and then answer that. So I think you've, if you're not, if you haven't dealt with changing your language for people, then you're not talking with enough people. That's just the reality of it. Um, the number 10, uh, the husband name change. Okay. So if for some reason, like the, the, I'm working with the wife and like, you know, she's just having some marital problems. Who doesn't have marital problems? I mean, just, that's just, that's just life. Like, you know, you're just going to have some ups and downs. If it's all up, you're probably not married. Um, you know, but the reality is, is, um, so, so sometimes the husband's around. So then what I'll do is just for, just for the, the, you know, the woman has no privacy for whatever reason. So we'll just change the name of the husband. You know, we'll just call him like, like Rupert, you know, like Rupert. Is this, is this your, is this um, have to do with Rupert at work again? You know, and we both know what it means, but, uh, but we say, it's like, yeah, that, that's, that's Rupert, you know, and I bet the, the husband's walking by, but I can see the husband walking back and forth. And so I'm like, who's this Rupert working, you know, at your work? You, know, so you never mentioned a Rupert there, but anyway, so I think it's kind of funny. I thought like, like I just kind of made, I kind of, like to work with my clients and have some fun. Why? Because we're talking about serious stuff. So make it more lighthearted. And so we'll just kind of like, hey, do you mind if we call your husband like Elkanor? It's like, yeah, let's call him Elkanor. Like, you know, we'll just, just make something up. And it's just, um, it's just funny. Like she's laughing on that side. I'm laughing on that side. So we're healing, but we're having fun, you know? Uh, and the last one is um, uh, the extra services that I provide. Now, this is just kind of a joke. What I'll do is I'll say, you know, how these extra service, like it seems like this person has been a big problem in your life. We have these extra services. After 9 p.m., what I do is I, I have a ski mask. No big deal. Don't, don't question the ski mask. And I, I can take care of that, that person uh, at no extra cost. And um, what, I, what I do is, well, it's not really important to what I do. But just let's just say you're not going to hear from that person much. Anymore. You know, I just, I just joke around like that. And it's just funny because they get always, I always get a laugh from my clients. They laugh, so we're just kind of just having fun. And then um, what's interesting is some of them are like, you can do that? Like how, how much does that really cost? You know, and then I'm like, whoa, okay, then not, now it's now it's not fun anymore. Uh, you know, so there's two reactions: either the either the the hmm, what is, where is he going with this, or the that's hilarious that you're saying that, or there's the yeah. So how much does it really cost, though? Honestly, like you know. So I just think that's really funny. Just these little extra services, and I throw it out there just to make the person laugh. But anyway, those are my 11 things. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you had a little bit of a laugh. And uh, feel free to comment below and and write down. What are some funny things that have happened as an emotion co practitioner? Just they're just hilarious. So you, I mean, you have to have. It. I think we take ourselves way too seriously. Let's have fun. Let's serve a lot of people. Let's you know, and uh, hopefully this this entertained you. And feel free to share this with your emotion code practitioner friends. They'll definitely appreciate this. I think for sure, and it'll give them a giggle because again, it kind of lets us know that you know we're dealing with humans. You know, it's like the most. Um, uh, just rock, like not, not really rock steady, but we're just kind of like on a boat all together. There's some holes in it. The wind's going to be strong. It's just life, you know? And so I uh, hope you guys enjoy this and had some fun with it. Uh, the next, uh, video I'm going to make is about some nuggets that I learned from our last conference. So stay tuned. Uh, this is Emmanuel Zavas, your emotion code practitioner right here in Las Vegas. Uh, as I always uh, end our, our, um, our videos, I just want to say that the world has a false notion where, you know, I'll take care of you if you take care of me. But if we, if we take care of ourselves, then we can authentically take care of others. And as we take care of others, we can change our city. We can change our country. We can change the world. So with that, love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.